Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for joining us. Do we have a distinguished guest today or what? We have David Vogel, a data driver, a hedge fund manager, and environmentalist. And it's all pretty mind boggling. He is the winner of a health-related competition, won nationwide. He is the winner of $500,000 for another data-driven competition. And before he became a hedge fund manager and philanthropist, he was in the health field, again, driving data such that he was able to predict the outbreak and the outcome of diseases far better than the medical profession could do in their normal, traditional way. So, welcome, David. I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed here. Thank you, Howard. Hmm. So let's talk first about hedge fund managers. Some of us, um, we think hedge fund managers, but it turns out, you assure me that there are good guy hedge fund managers, exemplified by yourself, and with your money, you have established a philant or a um, uh, foundation. Please describe our found your foundation for you. Yes. So the uh, foundation is called Volo Foundation. Uh, my wife and I started it in 2014, and our main focus is um, <coughs> is environmental causes. Um, we trying to leverage off of our data-driven skills to mm -hmm. uh, prove, to r raise awareness um, for global warming and, and what we're doing to our environment. And as I understand it, when you're giving away money, you give to certain organizations, and if I understand data driving now, you are predicting which of the environmental organizations or other entities give you the biggest bang for the buck in terms of reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Is that a good summary? Uh, yes, it's a good summary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the first slide. We've got all kinds of uh, wonderful things to uh, cover here. Okay, and next, oh yeah, oh, let, this is important. Data proves, you know there's been some controversy is global warming related to man's activities? There are certain highly placed figures who would have you not believe that. David's numbers are not based on theory. They are based on data. Data, David. So next slide, please. And so this is, is global warming business is not a recent thing. You want to explain a little bit of this? Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, a lot of people who may not want you to believe in global warming will say it's a new science. Scientists are not sure. Um, my main point here is this is a 200-year-old science uh, mm -hmm. that, that people knew that carbon dioxide was a greenhouse gas and produced and trapped heat for 200 years. Um, even right after the Industrial Revolution, there were physicists doing predictions that were very consistent mm -hmm. with predictions today uh, that mm -hmm. doubling mm -hmm. the CO2 in the atmosphere uh, will <coughs> raise temperatures by, by around 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And mm -hmm. guess what? We're about halfway yep, there. Yep, yep, we're there. Okay, let's look at the next slide. So this, these predictions happened before the Wright brothers started flying airplanes. Exactly. I mean, this is an analogy. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you don't want to believe in climate science, then, then you shouldn't believe that airplanes would Mm -hmm. They might just mm -hmm. fall out mm -hmm. of the sky if, if, if physicists yep, yep. don't know what they're doing. Yep. And our next slide will illustrate this. So what happens to CO2? It, tr it hits the Earth's atmosphere, tries to bounce back up, but instead of going out into the cool universe, it gets trapped. Exactly, and yep. that's just a, a chemical property of carbon dioxide that certain frequencies of light uh, end up bouncing around. And, and generating a lot of heat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, for those of us who need an illustration, we need think back only to Hawaii, was it three years ago? 
we had the miserable, miserable spell of weather, and my surfing friends told me that the ocean was five degrees warmer than usual, and we had hurricanes coming at us at a mile a minute from the Gulf of Mexico. So anybody who doubted, unfortunately, that, that may be a, a, a harbinger of things to come. Right, I mean, that's yeah. one of the big, <coughs> big uh, threats. I mean, we might think one or two degrees, well, we'll feel a little bit warmer, no big mm -hmm, deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but one or two degrees for a hurricane is the difference in yep. a hurricane strengthening or weakening. Yep, there's the, the tipping point. So if we could have the next slide. Okay, now this is something I cannot explain. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess to calculate that, that, um, that the carbon dioxide increases are man-made, you've got to know how many molecules are there are in the atmosphere. And you can figure that out just by weighing the air with a standard barometer. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Earth is about 500 trillion, trillion square meters. And so we know how many molecules of air there are. And from that, we know what kind of concentrations we're creating. Mm -hmm. And you, the audience will be quizzed on this after this. Absolutely. And E, e means? And that means followed by 23 zeros. Yep, or, or, yep. Or that's 44 uh, zeros. So that's there's one followed by 44 zeros molecules in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Suffice to say, a lot of molecules. And, and you're right. measuring. You're such a data cruncher that you're able to measure all of this. Right. And interesting, you can calculate that with a spreadsheet in high school level math and chemistry. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't learn that in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to the next slide here. And so we know that one followed by 38 zeros is one part per million. That, mm -hmm. that, that many molecules is one part per million. And so when you look at this graph, uh, uh, you see... Now this, this is this, our current year here. Uh, this is the last five years. Oh, so that's you can see okay. the bottom graph is 2011. And that's oh, a, those are the see. seasonal okay, fluctuations, okay. Mm -hmm. the natural fluctuations by season goes, it goes up and down. But you see every year it's increasing by wow. a good three or so parts per million. That is impressive. This is just a five-year span, and it's so, so measurable. It's just five years, and it's yeah. very noticeable. And it's consistent as all heck also. That's right. Every yeah. year we're adding, every year three mm -hmm. parts per million, it goes up. Well, let's go to the next slide. Keep. Um, and so, from the just from numbers we know in the coal industry, uh, we we know. I mean, this is published by the International Energy Agency. It's published by BP. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is how much coal we burn, and just the standard calculation, you can figure out that that about two parts per million come come right from coal. So mm -hmm. accounted for every molecule. Impressive. And here's oil. Uh, same thing with oil. You take the standard numbers, standard known in the uh, energy industry, 96, miles per, 96 million barrels per day uh, consumed. Take the weight of carbon in there, multiply it out, and you account for another one and a half parts, parts per million. Mm -hmm. And just so the audience understands, this is per day, not per year. Right. It's and about 35 billion barrels per year. And one barrel is 42 gallons, so we're talking unbelievably high numbers. That's correct. And if we looked at the next slide here, here this is the, the previous one. And as you explained to me, this is, no, this is based, uh, we, we just covered coal and oil, but there's a heck of a lot of other factors that account for the CO2 buildup too, uh, namely natural gas, the burning of wood, uh, yeah. de deforestation, because yeah. the, when the trees are cut down, they no longer absorb the CO2. That's right. So there's yeah. a lot more man-made carbon, and I just wanted to show how clear it was that that this increase is 100% man-made. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh oh, here's a good old uh, Mauna Loa. Data now, please look. This is eight hundred thousand years. Yes. Yeah. Um, so based on samples from ice cores, we can figure out at various periods of time over the last million years uh, what temperature it was and what what the carbon CO two concentration mm -hmm. was. 
And how in the world do we get that data? I, I envision us going to a huge, huge glacier in Greenland and yeah. just drilling down how? That's Any idea how far down you have to drill to get this? Uh, I, I don't know exactly how far, yeah. but they've mm. gone down far enough to go back to get samples from 800,000 years ago. Yeah, very impressive. So we and see how carbon dioxide has fluctuated between about 180 and 300 parts per million mm -hmm. um, until all this man-made. So the, the climate skeptics keep pointing mm -hmm. out, well, history shows that the CO2 levels go up and down, up and down, and that is absolutely true. But look at where that arrow is ending up right now. That's right. Natural uh, fluctuations will, will move it slowly, maybe over, over 100 years, it might go up or down a few parts per million. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you can see we're way off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. And what's going on here? This is the correlation between CO2 and the temperatures. Right. So it's basically the last graph zoomed in mm -hmm. on the last 140 years. Um, and you can see how CO2 concentration has gone up um, due to the fossil fuel burning and deforestation and how the temperature is going up. Now there's always going to be a little bit of a lag because you create the oven with the CO2, and then it takes you over the years, mm -hmm. um, the temperature will continue to go up. Yeah. And ju just to, if you can go back to, to that slide, uh, historically, the, what was it, the cotton gin or something was invented about 1790 or so, and that was the beginning of real fossil fuel burning. And then 1856, the the oil well in Pennsylvania was discovered, and that led to a real dramatic increase in oil burning from then on. Meanwhile, coal was used for more and more and more applications. So by 1880, we'd already started to be pretty darned industrialized, and we've just gone gangbusters uh, ever since then. Sorry, it's just accelerating. Yeah. And I, uh, just to add, the one reason for the acceleration is that we in the industrialized world, Europe, Japan, uh, America, have kind of leveled off on our fossil fuel consumption. But what used to be the third world, na notably India and China, are rapidly moving up, 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 up by the hundreds of millions of people. They're going from bicycles to scooters, from scooters to cars, their air conditioning, and that accounts for this more rapid acceleration. And on that cheery note, we need to take a break. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, David Vogel, my distinguished guest, back in a minute. Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apachella. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Welcome back, Howard Wig. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, my extremely distinguished guest, David Vogel, number cruncher and environmentalist extraordinaire. Now, before we get into slides, you said you had a different uh, take on what constitutes an environmentalist. We think of the normal one as being a tree hugger, but instead of hugging trees, you are... Well, it's kind of a misnomer <laughs> because there's the, right, there's the uh, idea that, that environmentalists care more about trees than about people. Mm -hmm. It's really the other way around. Um, you could call me a peopleist. 
mm -hmm. um, because my goal is to is to create an environment that is supportive of humans thriving, Americans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thriving, um, not a world of natural disasters. Because the environment's always going to survive. It's survived for tens of millions of years. It's yeah. gone through mass extin extinctions. Mm -hmm. So the environment's not really in danger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mother, we're, Mother we're Nature can do very well without us. That's in right. fact, they, it can do much better without us. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the environment is nothing to worry mm -hmm. about. It's, it's us to worry about. So mm -hmm. really all this environmental work is, is for people. And I might point out that it was last summer, uh, a seacoast town in Iraq, I believe it was, got up to 137 degrees. And because it's next to the sea, you had humidity thrown in. Utterly, totally unbearable. I, I don't know how these people survived. Right. I mean, we're yeah. seeing disasters worldwide, but even mm -hmm. in our own country, we're up to 350 or 400 billion a year mm -hmm. in, in um, damages from natural disasters, and it's, and it's just going up. Yeah, the, the latest palpable example being uh, Phoenix, Arizona, just a few years ago, the airplanes couldn't take off. Why, why couldn't airplanes take off because of heat? What, what's the deal there? Uh, uh, again, I don't know the physics oh. behind it. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> but again, it's another it has, effect. It has to do with denser air versus uh, th th thinner air. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, let's uh, move on to our next slide. And this is really fascinating. What in the world are all these little dots about here now? OK, well, on the x-axis going across, we've got the carbon dioxide concentration at various times in the last 800,000 years. So mm -hmm. remember how I said we have all those data points from ice samples. And we also know at, those, at that period of time, at those periods of time, what the average Earth's temperature was. And you can see this, this crazy strong correlation between carbon dioxide and, um, and the Earth's temperature. Mm -hmm. um, so that sort of the basis, the data-driven basis for, um, for predicting uh, where, <coughs> where temperatures would go to rise to if we stopped emitting any kind of carbon, additional carbon today. Mm -hmm. And so you can see those, those two possible projections on the right. So what's, what's crazy is all the data points of the last 800,000 years fit between 180 and 280 parts per million on the left. And we are over, we don't have a data point for 400 parts per million, which is where we are today. Mm -hmm. So that gives you an idea of the magnitude of how much carbon we've pumped into the atmosphere and, and what kind of temperature increase we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And the six degrees, is that C or F? Um, that, is, um, that is C. C, so centigrade, so um, multiply by about 2.2 and we get about 13, 14 degrees? Um, ac actually, it's close to about 10, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, but mm -hmm. that's at the polar ice cap where the, where oh. the samples are taken. So you actually divide that in half, and mm -hmm. it's more of a five degree prediction in over the whole. Oh, over oh okay, whole. yeah. Okay, and the next slide will be revealing. Here's something that brings all of this really home. I was uh, I landed at Kennedy Airport in uh, New York City the day after. What was the big disaster that hit New York City? S Sandy, Hurricane Sandy, Sandy. Yeah. yeah. And the subways had utterly stopped. I stay right on Queens Boulevard, where one of the major subway lines is, and it was eerily quiet. Why? The subway tunnels were flooded, and Wall Street had to close down for days and days. Why? Wall Street was flooded. And the very often the electrical components are in the basement of the building, flooded. Excellent example right. of the effects of global warming. And that, and that sort of gets us to think why we don't put a price on, on the carbon we emit, because uh, we are causing global warming. We are eventually causing um, hundreds of billions in damages. Mm -hmm. um, so there really is a price that we pay that needs to be calculated in, into everything when we mm -hmm. decide whether to go renewables or, or, or not. Yeah, and, and we'll get to, to that solution yeah. uh, just in a very short while. 
but just recently we had what we call it the, the king tide here in uh, Honolulu. It was the confluence, I think, of a full moon and a high tide anyway, and then the rise in, in ocean level. Right. I mean, it adds up. I mean, people don't see it as an immediate danger because it's just mm -hmm. a few millimeters every year, but mm -hmm. a few millimeters mm -hmm. every single year adds up. And, and you've got a lot of places near sea, sea level that are going to be greatly affected. Yeah. And there's a certain population in Honolulu, what's its name? Starts with a W, a Waikiki. Yes. It, uh, <laughs> a little, uh, and we have, to, as I understand it, we have to replenish the sand in, in Waikiki every, every year. Yeah. Because the higher tides, uh, plus walls, wash it all out there. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing this in, with increasing frequency and an increasing intensity. Yes. O over the years here. And go to our next slide. Hmm, that looks very familiar. This is New, New Orleans, I presume? Uh, yes, and, and of course, being a resident of Florida, I know mm -hmm. hurricanes all too well. Hmm. And, um, and having studied hurricanes for a bit, I know how they weaken when the water's a few degrees cooler and strengthen mm -hmm. it's a few degrees warmer. Mm -hmm. And so a few degrees is a very big deal. Yeah, the yeah. hurricane keeps strengthening and strengthening, we're going to be seeing Category 5 hurricanes. And categor that's a Category 5 there. That uh, is... I don't recall which, which one that... that yeah, that's, uh, that's Hurricane 5 is the worst. Yes. And I don't think you can get any uh, worse than that. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't think that one was even a 5. Mm -hmm. And the cost to New Orleans alone was must be billions yes. and billions right. and billions yeah, and billions. billions. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, the scientists are saying that the uh, ocean was a traditional absorber of the Earth's heat. Yes. And it's kind of reaching a, a saturation point where it can absorb less and less and less. Have you heard that? Um, yes, because yeah. eventually the heat, enough heat will be absorbed where, where the tent where it can't absorb, it won't absorb anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so not only we're doing, we're creating a problem with the ocean being warmer, because hurricane strengthening, um, CO2 in the water creates acidification, so mm -hmm. we might have a problem with fish supply as well. Oh, and, and um, uh, uh, co coral bleaching. That's right, coral be yeah. bleaching. Um, so, um, so because of the comp complicated nature of, of water currents, I don't think we know exactly how much heat it can absorb, but mm -hmm. we are already mm -hmm. seeing an acceleration of temperature increase. Yep. And accelerating, again, going faster and faster and faster. And so. regarding coral bleaching, coral is the the seminal point or the petri dish of a lot of uh, the ocean life. That's, That's where it all begins, and then it spreads out from there. That's correct. So you deaden the coral, you deaden the life, you deaden the amount of fish in the ocean. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So on that cheery note, let's uh, go to one of our final slides, and we'll talk about solutions. So my, my main point here is that I think, I think, first of all, the public has to be aware that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And I is your foundation doing anything to spread the word? Uh, well, by being on this show, that's mm -hmm. one thing, mm -hmm. but we're trying our best to put the word out there. Uh, we'll probably um, post some information with the calculations, uh, um, but a lot of it's just... Is, it, is that on your website? Or? Uh, it is on our yeah. website. Mm. Do you take out full page ads on the New York Times or anything? Or? Uh, no, we haven't done that. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, but <clears throat> trying to talk as much as we can with influential people mm -hmm. um, to um, just get the message out there. And sure, once sure. there's enough public awareness, mm -hmm. then we need <clears throat> um, we need policies that'll help. I, I know a lot of companies are working hard toward <clears throat> zero emissions, uh, but I don't think that's enough. I think you need policy to help. And uh, can, can you give some examples of policy? Uh, well, uh, one, I think uh, here in Hawaii, for example, Hawaii is a good example. 
number one state in, in the U.S. for renewables. We're 26 percent mm -hmm. renewable here in Hawaii. Um, and so uh, Governor Ige, I know, was, is very much behind. He set the goal. This mm -hmm. is the goal to, be, mm -hmm. to get to net zero um, by, by a certain year. And, and don't forget or do remember efficiencies because that's my field. That's right. Yeah. Right. Now, in fact, Hawaii's electrical consumption in the residential area, the commercial area, and the industrial area are all going down, despite the fact that our population is growing and more people are buying air conditioners and more people are buying 92-inch TVs right. and they're back to buying SUVs. Well, that's transportation. But right. despite all of those growth indicators, oh, and tourists, we're having 8.2 million tourists. Uh, they, they create some CO2 also. Despite all of that, we our electrical consumption is going down. Yeah. Yep. So we're definitely making progress, but 26% is the leader, but we need to get to 100%. Mm -hmm. And we need to wrap up, but innovation. What are you doing about innovation? Uh, well, if we go to the, um, <coughs> oh, as far as innovation, mm -hmm. air con well, one of the projects we we fund is, is more efficient air conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, so research in that area. So we <coughs> fund some. Yeah, we, yeah. We also invest in them. Um, we're looking to invest in some startup companies that are renewable based. Yeah, yeah. Good research going there. And finally, we need to wrap up. But one hundred and forty dollars a ton for oh, for right. yeah for CO two carbon tax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that's my policy um, idea. Ah, and. Um, again, just an idea mm -hmm. came up with, um, pays per the quantifies, if you can quantify the damages done by carbon dioxide, which is very difficult because it increases every year, it's mm -hmm. not a mm -hmm. flat amount. Uh, but if you, similarly, I guess a good analogy would be if I were to throw a bag of trash in, in your landfill, I would have to pay you a few bucks to mm -hmm. <laughs> use your landfill. Yeah, so, so which you do, yeah. So if carbon dioxide is treated like trash and I mm -hmm. throw a bag of CO2 to the atmosphere, Good I analogy, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it actually solves a lot of problems at once. And what about the concept, this is just my own, of when you tax fossil fuel, you commensurately reduce income tax? Um, that's true. You can yeah. solve a lot of problems. You can reduce income tax. You steer the economy toward, um, toward renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, and the one nice thing about that amount is the $140 is actually less than the per barrel of oil that comes out to about $50 a barrel, which seems very, very high. But we actually paid more than that at one point. We certainly did. And the economy didn't collapse. So you could argue that this is market yeah, tested yeah. and very doable. And again, if you, my idea, reduce income tax, yeah, there, there's a trade off there. Yeah. And finally, do we have any contact information for you? Uh, yes. Uh, you can, there's information on our website, volofoundation.org, and you can contact our program director, Ab Abigail Axelrod. There she is. And um, any questions, welcome. Yeah. Okay, we got to wrap up. Thank you so much, David. This has been fascinating. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.